If you've been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, chances are somebody prescribed you a beta blocker. But what exactly do beta blockers do? Are they treating the cause of your AFib or just the symptom? In this video, I'll explain the role of beta blockers in AFib, when they help, when they don't, and what you need to know to make sure you're getting the right treatment. So beta blockers like metoprolol, atenolol, carbidolol, and bisoprolol they're medications that slow your heart rate down. They work by blocking the effects of adrenaline on your heart. They reduce how fast your heart beats. And now in the context of atrial fibrillation, they're used for rate control. That means helping to keep the heart from racing out of control when the AFib takes over control of your heart from your normal rhythm. But here's the key point. They don't stop the atrial fibrillation itself. You'll still be in AFib. They're just helping your heart beat slower while you're in it. So if you've ever heard your doctor say, we just want to control your heart rate, they're probably talking about using beta blockers or other rate controlling medications like calcium channel blockers, such as diltiazem or digoxin. Now, beta blockers are often helpful when you're in atrial fibrillation and your heart rate is very, very fast, or you're not a candidate for rhythm control strategies, strategies that actually try to get you out of AFib, or you're in heart failure with preserved or reduced ejection fraction because rapid rates in AFib can worsen heart failure, especially if you have a weak underlying heart condition. But beta blockers can be less helpful or even harmful when your heart rate isn't that fast in AFib and beta blockers make you feel tired or sluggish, you're young or athletic and your resting heart rate in normal rhythm is already slow, could be made slower with, it, with the beta blocker, or you're still having symptoms like shortness of breath or fatigue despite being, quote, rate controlled on the beta blocker. That's because rate control doesn't fix the underlying rhythm problem. It just slows the heart rate down. Some people still feel awful in atrial fibrillation, even with a good rate. That's when rhythm control may be the better path. If beta blockers aren't helping you feel better, it may be time to discuss rhythm control options, such as antiarrhythmic drugs like Flecainide, Sotalol, Dofetilide, and Yero. These drugs actually suppress the AFib and maintain you in normal rhythm. Or cardioversion, that shock to temporarily get you back to normal rhythm. Or a catheter ablation for atrial fibrillation, which works to eliminate the sources or triggers of AFib from inside your heart so that you are staying in normal rhythm without a medication. Now, it's important to understand that beta blockers don't treat atrial fibrillation, they manage a symptom. And for some, that may be enough. If you are elderly, 90 years old, that's the least risky thing to do and it might be good enough. But for others, it's not good enough. So I recommend you work with a cardiologist or an electrophysiologist who will tailor treatment based on how AFib is actually affecting you, not just your numbers on a monitor. So are beta blockers helping or just masking the problem? For some AFib patients, they're an essential tool. For others, they're just a temporary patch. Understanding the difference is key to getting the right treatment for you. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out my other videos on rhythm versus rate control and when an ablation may or may not make sense for you. And remember, your quality of life matters. Don't settle for being told, quote, you're fine, if you still feel bad. For everything atrial fibrillation related, please feel free to go to my website, drscottlee.com, where you're gonna find more resources and also can follow me on social media.